It's really nice to be here. It's nice to be back in Europe because uh, maybe Kirsten didn't say, but I'm now living in Singapore for uh, about two years. And every time when I come come back, I realize how much nicer it is in Europe than in than in Asia. For holidays, it's nice, but for living, it's something else. Um, I I I haven't done a lecture for a long time, so we will just. Maybe it will tumble a bit, maybe it will, I will come back to some points that I have already done before. But I will start with this, well, with this uh, book of Luigi Giri, which already for a long time is kind of a secretly, I'm looking at it secretly more and more, and what was he doing, how does it look, how is it built up, and what does he want to say. The book is not called Weekend, but it's called uh, Atlante. And um, well, maybe I should tell maybe first that this is not going, going to be about architecture. It's going to be about photography, and um, in the sense that it is going to be about photography. That that I'm mainly a photographer, and the reference is mainly a photographer. But there are obvious links, which will come later. Atlante was a book that was uh, made in uh, 72 by uh, Luigi Giri, and he was then not yet really a famous photographer. He was, uh, let's say, potentially very good, but he didn't really do anything yet. Um, he, uh, he was, uh, how do you say this in English, a uh, 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 land measurer, so he would uh, go and, and measure the ground or the topography. And this was his, uh, his uh, background, even though he was trained as an artist and as a, as a photographer. In the, let's say, anecdotes, it says that uh, he was very interested, since he was a student or since he was a kid, in the atlas which was, uh, which was there at his parents. He would uh, go and look for hours and hours and imagine how you travel around the world. And apparently, at one day, he just sat down with his atlas and took a long lens on the kitchen table, and he started to photograph all the details of the map. But maybe we have to go one step back in the sense that uh, he was already writing on image. And on image in general, I mean, let's say he had a quite particular interest in what an image is and how you can make one. So for instance, the very first thing that he was writing, um, I will just read it, it's the easiest, I think. It says, in, in 1996, uh, 
The newspapers published a photograph taken from the spaceship traveling to the moon. <coughs> this was the first photograph of the entire Earth. The image that man had pursued for centuries was presented for our view. It held within all its previous incomplete images, all books that had been written, all signs, those that had been dispersed and those that had not. It was not only the image of the entire world, but the only image that contained all the other images of the world. <coughs> Graffiti, frescoes, paintings, writings, photographs, books, films, and it was at once the representation of the world and all of the representations of the world. And somehow I think if you start to understand that this for him meant that with this one image, all the other images were already made. It meant that he had to find another way how to make his own images. So where do you go when all the images are made? And I think Atlante is a very interesting, is a very interesting attempt. Wait. wait. It's a very interesting attempt. Because it, in Atlanta, he starts to write, and this is in 73, uh, I think he was around 32 or 33, around that time. He says, an atlas is a book, the place where all the signs of the earth, from the natural to the cultural ones, are conventionally represented. Mountains, lakes, pyramids, oceans, cities, villages, stars, islands. In this totality of symbols and descriptions, we locate the place where we live and where we would like to go. So he understands that this atlas, that through looking at an atlas, you can look at the world. And you can imagine how the world is, and maybe even you can even see how the world is. Then he writes a little bit further. It's actually quite beautifully layout. So it's like very strangely architectural in this circle. Um, <coughs> he writes, uh, by now, all the paradise islands dear to literature and to our hopes have already been described. And the only possible discovery or journey seems to be that of discovering the discovery already made. And somehow when I read this, uh, I, I was quite uh, fascinated because this meant that you don't have to go anywhere or you can go anywhere, but it doesn't mean that you are the one who has to discover. You are the one who has to reintroduce something that already has been discovered. And how do you do that? Well, you do that, I guess, by reframing or by putting things in a new order or putting things in a new relation. And somehow when I read this, I understood that... Um, let's say, this idea of traveling, of him, is much more an act of looking at things and interpreting. So I will just go through this book that he made. Where actually, it's a very simple book, of course. He just, uh, he photographs the atlas. He goes so close that you don't see the country anymore. He goes so close that you don't see real borders anymore. You see, let's say, fragments. You see hints of where it could be, and you can start to imagine what kind of a landscape we are in. Obviously, here we are in an oasis. So there are a lot of elements that we know, and we can immediately, let's say, understand what type of landscape it is. And this, to him, I guess, is the, most, uh, uh, is the most important and the most interesting. Uh, I guess he writes here, thus, an analogously to the only possible journey now seems to be within the sphere of the signs and images, that is, in the destruction of the direct experience. If ocean immediately elic uh, elicits the infinitive, infinitive possible, possible images we have in our mind, as the writing gradually disappears, so too 
the meridians and the parallels and numbers. The landscape becomes natural. So I, I guess what he tries to explain is that we already have so much understanding of, of the landscapes that are portrayed that even by seeing this kind of an extremely abstract image of a landscape, this, uh, this abstract image of the world, if we look at it for 10 minutes, we are more there than, than the image that we now see. So you start to think you're on the ground in Cheops in this case, or, well, the ocean has, of course, many, many uh, um, images that, that we know, and you can visit this place without that you have to go there. Um, And what I guess, or at least how, that's how I interpret, is that he also means that when you actually go to this ocean or uh, to this island or the mountain, I don't know what this is, in a, to be honest, is that the picture you would take there, it's probably as much as a representation of the landscape as what he is giving here. So the image that you make when you are there is as much trying to do the same thing. So it tries to tell you how that place works. So how uh, <laughs> um, how to explain this in a good way. If you are if you're taking a photograph and you show it to someone else, you don't show the real thing. You show a kind of an impression of the real thing. And this impression is as much here as, as it is in the photograph of the real place. And I think there he starts to... It is interesting that as a photographer, he starts at this point. So to understand that the image is always a representation of an idea, and that can transplant another idea of the reality. So we go through the book. Some are very abstract, and they're also extremely beautiful. He's, maybe it's also good to say that uh, he is not really a, even though you could say it's a conceptual work, he's really also a lot about, uh, in his case, it has to be also beautiful. It has to have a sub subjective element. And I think that makes the work also extremely brilliant, and also it makes it imaginative, and you want to look at it and you want to imagine what kind of landscape it is, and you want to transplant yourself from a very abstract uh, uh, image to, to make it real. Here we go a bit closer. Shortly, only one image of the, let's say, with this Atalante or Atlante, he puts down his, his idea of what an image is or how you should look at it. And the next project he does is, uh, well, you could say extremely simple, but also extremely beautiful and has been repeated many times and maybe sometimes su successfully, someone sometimes not so successfully. He basically photographs well, if I would now say he photographs the opposite direction of the photograph he talked about in the beginning, so the spaceship photographing Earth, he now photographs the other way. I don't think it's meant in another way. I think he really meant it in that sense. So if, if we can have a picture of the whole, of everything, then is photographing the sky not the same? You know, is it not... Uh... So he photographs the sky every day for one year, very con 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 conceptually, well, how you would do it, no? and he calls it in in infinito or infinitive, and you have to know that, uh, and it has a it has an image. The image is this, and you have to know that on a camera, the in, the infinity is the end of where you can uh, put your lens, and it means that the infinity is sharp. It means that it's the sharpest you can see as far away as possible. 
<laughs> and the interesting thing is that with these pictures, he just, uh, he just prints 365, and he says you can arrange them how you like. It's anyway the same. You don't have to arrange them from day one to day 365. You should arrange them how you think it's beautiful. No? Ah, yeah. Um. I put these in because they are a question for me. I'm, uh, I'm uh, wondering. He, he, he. Giri, it's a, it's a, it's a. Let's say he's a local guy. He lives in 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 Modena, in Italy, and all his first works are all in Modena. They're all made in a surrounding that he knows, that he's comfortable with, and that he wants to show. Even this atlas, you can say it's a travel, but it's a travel on his kitchen table at his house. No, it's, it's an imaginary travel wanting to go, in, to go somewhere, but the question is, does he really want to go somewhere? You know, you don't know. So he makes a whole series in, I think this is 10 years later, he makes a whole series of images, and they're all called Amsterdam. So I guess he was in Amsterdam. And he doesn't photograph a single real place. He photographs found images with objects on top or other images on top, which also imply a kind of a travel, I, must, I would almost say. They imply a kind of a searching for a place that is not really there. And there is nothing of Amsterdam to be seen there. No? It's all a kind of experiments in, in let's say, an image on top of an image, and then to cut it in such a way that it becomes, again, something new. And I think, but I'm not sure, that uh, he was just, since he was out of his normal surrounding, he just didn't want to represent the other part of the world, or he didn't know how to, one or the other. So he understands that he has to work with the image. The image has a, let's say, um, mm, well, I would almost say the image that contains other images. And then if you think back of Atlante, he does the same. It's an it's a image of an atlas which contains other images, which contains a new image and a new image. And I find that extremely interesting that he understands the photography or the camera as a tool to find a place uh, or to find new images by re-photographing other images. Maybe it gets a bit too, rep too re repetitive now, but I think it's extremely beautiful, this. And somehow I understand that you go from a photographing of an atlas to photographing images on top of images, which should imply a certain travel, even though the travel might be, well, improbable, no? He definitely doesn't want to say anything about the real uh, uh, place. As you probably know, Giri is most, well, probably to you, he's most uh, famous for the, for the one picture that he took uh, of, the, of, the, of the Modena Cemetery of uh, Aldo Rossi. Very beautiful image, I think it's a bit further. Um, but the most beautiful images he made for Rossi, I would say, are the ones of his house. And there you say, let's say, if we go back to the collages, which tell, well, in a way to me this is the same. It's a kind of a, a layering of other images, which are of course collected by Rossi, which should say something about Rossi, but not only the image says something about Rossi, also if you see this radiator behind the, the doorknob, and the doorknob is almost the same as the radiator, and it's all cut in such a way that it all becomes one, and you have this, this top of this uh, model, probably, what, what is it? It somehow becomes a very beautiful. Uh, uh, it, it becomes a very beautiful way to represent an architect. You know, it it represents its uh, well, let's say his 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 ideas or where where does it come from? And it's not only a kind of very boringly photographed straight. It's it's photographed in a context in which everything becomes one 
story. In a way, here the same, you know, the, the, the wall which has the same color as the background of the drawing. You know, it's all very, you know, it, 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 it gives you a completely different understanding of, of the architect in this case. And it's a kind of images made out of images. And now I'm talking about it, I think that for me is the most interesting thing, that in, in his work, um, the image always contains images, either if it's real, like there's really images to be seen, like here, or if it's the atlas in which he goes to find new ones. I hear, here it is, of course, the one that we all know which he claims he made from, a, uh, from the passenger side of a car when he was driving past it, which is a question. It's so beautifully uh, com composed that it's really a question. But I think for him, you could say, for him it's all also important to have that story, to make you understand that it's not, uh, well, he would say uh, architecture photography is like a still life and, and he's doubting if he wants to uh, uh, act, act in that, no? if he wants to do the act of a still life in which everything is arranged uh, perfectly. He thinks that that is the, the least interesting part of it and it's the, actually the moving through the architecture and finding of images. He, he explains when he goes to photograph this uh, 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 cemetery that he takes so many pictures but mainly because he sees new views every, every moment and at a certain point he understands he can't photograph them all and he changes uh, his, his working method and he says well actually just walking through is almost as if I'm taking pictures which I think is a very, and, and then he says, and I think that's the greatest compliment I can give to an architect. He says, this is a, and I think that is somehow true. So, let's leave Giri. And we go to, let's say we do a hard cut and we go to my, to my work. This is a, a, a image of AA gallery um, one year ago, two years ago, I think, in which uh, I made a small exhibition of five big works. And um, on the other side of the gallery, I had some small works. I had two books I presented. One is called uh, Five Cities and the other one is called Reservoir. And in the bottom, I don't, it's, maybe it's a bit hard to see, it's a bit low res, but uh, so you have a picture on top, then you have the book. On the, in the middle layer, and on the bottom there is also still uh, booklets lying, which are what I call reference booklets, which are booklets full of images that somehow I collect or that, let's say, I make before I start to photograph. So in a way, it looked like this. It's a very simple uh, thing. You just go from a re from, well, it's always a, com a combination of a couple of images. So I will take you through a reference book first. And the reference book, of course, it's an image in which I try to find out what I should find in reality. And there, there are images that I really like in, a, in, the, in content wise, but also in composition or in color or just the whole atmosphere, it doesn't matter. Or sometimes there's even much more complicated uh, reason. Um, I will just take you through, and they are, they are very simple. They are just the A4, uh, folded A4, uh, printed, uh, well, not even layout, just I put just the images in, and then I organize them in a way that I think until they work. And then I take it with me when I start to photograph for a new book, or in this case, that's how it went. And it went like this because I was asked to photograph five cities in the Middle East, five cities where I had never been, which was Dubai, Cairo, Amman, Beirut, and Istanbul. And uh, in order to prepare, I, I 
I try to understand these five cities, let's say, almost as one uh, new city. And these references I used in order to prepare myself, to not get lost when I'm there, that everything what you see is interesting because you're there for the first time. I didn't want to be overwhelmed by a kind of a new experience. I wanted to be focused. And this focus I somehow tried to get by getting my mind into a certain order of images or a certain feel of images. So we go from a kind of a, from an American landscape on the left to, uh, I think it's Israel on the right, to uh, Star Wars on the left, to Dubai on the right, to uh, Mecca on the left, and to, what is, I think it's, uh, actually it's in the Nile Valley, the one on the right. And, and to me they make all sense together. And to go from this to this, and I will now show what came out of it. So it's a, it's a work which was made for the Architecture Biennial in Rotterdam. And in the end, it became a book. And the book is called The Refuge, or, or Five, Five Cities, in which I go through the edge of, uh, of these five cities and photograph the, you could say the periphery, but I would rather say I photograph the landscape where the landscape and the city meet. So where the newest extension of the city arises and where there is still a relation with the landscape. And I try to photograph it in the, in the, in the same, let's say, almost ab abstractness of the references that I, that I found before. So we go from Cairo to Dubai. And these are the worker, the worker cities. This is the edge of Cairo, very close to Giza, very, very, so not so far from the, let's say far from the center, not so far from the desert. And this is a finished, uh, it's a finished state of the city. And from there we go to Dubai. Maybe you already see some of the references returning or the other way around. You can see the images through the references. So this is a place this is a place called Garbage City in Cairo, where they recycle all the all the waste of Cairo. This is a refugee camp in uh, on the edge of the city in uh, in uh, Amman in Jordan as if it's kind of rolled out over the landscape, as if it's the whole city is rolling in one carpet uh, out over the pristine uh, valley that is still there. These are all Beirut. Failed, a failed development in Istanbul. Uh, well, what you, can you say? Kind of an urban block in Amman. A place called the International City in Dubai. Here we are in Istanbul. A long stay hotel in Dubai. But in a way, I hope you understand or I hope you will see the same is that these cities are not so different or let's say everything which we understand as a kind of specificity of the city doesn't, under, doesn't exist on this edge. The edge is quite similar. 
Of course, it's similar because it's all built now with a certain economics in a, in a region that is that is the same, and you could say that mainly the differences that you see are made because it is built in a different type of landscape, or it it is it has different e economic factors. I find that very interesting, but I to me what is the most important in this world in this work is that these images didn't come just from going there, but the images came through looking at references before, so it has a let's say a continuation in 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 the way you build up an image, in the way you build up a photograph, because I believe that you can only see a new photograph if you already have a well parts of it uh, uh, if they are already part of you. This is when they are in the exhibition. The next, uh, let's say, the second book in the exhibition in in, uh, in uh, AA is a much newer book and a much more, let's say, autonomous book, which is called Reservoir. And uh, Reservoir is uh, this is this is Reservoir, and uh, this is. Uh, Atlantis, or maybe now you already have some idea what, why it is a hidden reference. And it starts with uh, it starts with an image. Well, it's called reservoir for for uh, for more than one reason. But the first reason is that there is a there is one picture in the in the book which is called reservoir, which is this picture. Uh, which is a abandoned water reservoir in Los Angeles, which reminds me much more of a work of uh, Robert Smithson called Asphalt Rundown than it reminds me of a, of a water reservoir. And I like this uh, relation because Smithson was from that area and I almost can imagine that he saw this before he made his work. Huh? So we go quickly a little bit through. It starts with the reference image on the on the left, and a text, which is an interview between me and Stefano Graciani, which you all probably now know. And it takes, um, let's say, the place the places don't matter so much where they are taken. It is mainly the type of image and what is happening with this architecture or with this landscape that is there that has to make a rhythm. Ah, I forgot this was in. But actually it's not bad that it's in. <laughs> because this is maybe the, how am I doing with time by the way? Is it, is it fine? Because I must admit that I never revealed Luigi Giri as a as a reference, the one which I reveal normally is the is Louis Baltz, uh, which he he made a work called Park City, which to me is is extremely interesting, and maybe it's not so far from Giri after all. He photographed uh, well, Park City is in Aspen, so it's a it's a it's a ski resort, or at least then they were building a ski resort. Um, a ski resort of, uh, let's say, second houses. And he photographed it when they were building it. Well, he photographed it in a very ambiguous way. You don't know if they are building it. They could, as a matter of fact, destroy it at the same time through his images, you almost cannot say it is a landscape which is in destruction or in or in build up. No, it is a, it's almost a, it's it's not anymore a landscape photography you could say. It's almost a kind of a war photography. Like grainy black and white, although it's not grainy, but uh, um, it's black and white with this kind of a scenes of debris and high mountains. 
But the interesting thing is that he talks uh, uh, in about it for three reasons, that he did it for three reasons, or at least he talks about two, and I have a suspicion about one. He he says, uh, I want to photograph uh, what he calls a, a, a symptomatic place of our society. So this is 1980, <coughs> and he wants to photograph <coughs> second houses, estates, and how that kind of a... Uh, uh, the let's say the idea of having a second house or having too much money to be able to build a second house or to be able to get a mortgage to do that is a is a certain symptom of the landscape and how it is let's say changing the landscape so he he tries to find a place that is exemplary for that you know, to show this then at the second time he says well of course but uh, i'm um, I'm a photographer, I'm, I'm interested in what I can achieve in an image. So he photographs all these, uh, this whole site. Well, he photographs it with a small image camera, but he photographs it with, uh, I think, 20 ASA film, which means extremely sharp, non-grain, uh, very, uh, uh, um, let's say you see all the details. And then he says, in order to see all the details, I need to be in a place which is, has as little atmosphere as possible, because I want to look as far away as possible, and everything should be sharp. It should be almost flat. The idea of the image should be almost flat. Like the back should be sharp, and the front should be sharp. And he says, the only place where this uh, happens is high up in the mountains. So that are the two reasons why he chooses this particular place. On the other, you know, you can also easily say it fits perfectly in the work that he did before, uh, which is also true. And the third uh, thing, and that's my guess, is that he doesn't photograph it anymore as a, as a let's say, classical landscape or in a, in a classical way, but he takes this idea of almost turning it into a kind of war, war photography, almost aesthetics. <laughs> The aesthetics of how you would uh, describe uh, a destructive landscape. And I think these three, these three elements together, very precisely chosen, make that this work is, well, it's, it's, it's an extremely strong work in which this ambiguity of, of what is a contemporary landscape, uh, where is it placed in time, um, what does it tell us about our time, it's all in there, and the book, by the way, is, is, is also extremely beautifully printed. And I think it's his key, it's his key work. Yeah. So let's go back to Reservoir. <coughs> I will just take you through a series of landscapes. It's not, uh, uh, let's say, after Lewis Baltz, it's maybe a bit difficult, but it's not meant to be similar. Uh, but maybe you understand a certain, uh, let's say, reason and, and, let's say, a certain ambiguity of what you are seeing and in which state of these landscape, that these landscapes are. I will not tell much when I go through, so I just two minutes, three minutes.
Uh, so we go, this is the end of the book. And now afterwards I will show you the reference book. So the book that was made before. And you will, you will see that this uh, first image, it's called the leveling of the hills to make Seattle. It's also the reference of the, it's the only image that is printed in the book. And in a way you could say that all the images that come after, so all the images that I made, you could reread through looking at this image. It's not that it's uh, that they're all references, but you can understand the landscapes that I was photographing by looking at this image. It will change your perception, which I find very interesting. same image. Maybe I leave it here, I have more, but maybe we can talk, uh, uh, maybe I can explain later if there are more questions. So I guess in the end, <laughs> I think, I mean I was writing this in the play because I thought it was interesting that Giri in a way said that his image contains images. No? I find that fascinating and somehow I, I, I feel that there is not much difference there, although done in a completely different way. Thank you very much. I think we should take the opportunity to ask some questions, right? So, somebody from the audience there to ask. Um, you were saying that um, did you see your images as something already inherent in yourself when you're creating these, uh, say, reference mm -hmm. booklets. <coughs> so, uh, you are reconstructing the way your um, reference book that you are showing us. This reference book is, it becomes quite evident in the way. So you are really looking um, um, for the Kaaba, for example, mm -hmm. and so in another in other place. Is this true? That you are really going to some, some place with this um, kind of view, searching for Images. No, I think it's not. Uh, you have to understand it in a much broader sense. So there are thousand images, and um, those thousand images are more. I, I more or less. I am. Fa uh, how do you say? I know them vaguely. Let's say, I've seen them many times, and I know the compositions, and I know the type of image that it is. I'm not actively going out to look for that particular image, because there's anyway way too many. It is much more another type of device that when I see something, I can only see it because it reminds me of an image that I know. So it's very hard to see completely new things. And it's in a way a tool or a device where you, which you can use in order to narrow your view. I think narrowing your view is always very good. You know, that's that's the best in a way what you can do to understand what you want to see. You know? Because there's so much to see that you have you need reasons to choose. And I think these references are doing that. So they are telling me, for instance, if I see a black cube somewhere I could re refer it to this image, that image, that image, that image, and I don't have it with me, it's in my head, no? and I know approximately how the cube is standing in that image, or what kind of background it has. You know, this is, that's how it works, but it's all kind of, it's not very precise. I think the precision is not so important. The important thing is that you, that it allows you to see something. The reference booklets are, there for another reason. They are there to make sure that 
you have a certain rhythm and order in mind. So how you put new images next to each other, it is a, let's say the reference book is doing that. So that is in a way practicing to later in the book make the order of the images. Is it clear? <laughs> is it, I don't know. Is it clear? To me it's clear, but that's... Uh, but maybe because you are so explicit about reference images, huh? of course. Well, I'm explicit. I, I, I know, but I'm, I'm of course asking a question to which in private I know to sort extent of answers, but I think it's interesting here as a discussion in public. Would, would you argue that it's impossible to work without reference? In other words, I mean, you as a photographer today, after what you described in Giri's position, about your position, I would say indirectly, everything is discovered. Huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, that there's no point in uh, trying to walk around and find something new because there's nothing new. Mm -hmm. So uh, you only you're aware of that echo to some extent, and so you operate with all the cultural images you kind of carry with you. Is that the kind of conscious position? I think no. It's not very. It, I, I'm, maybe I also have to explain that it didn't start like this. Mm -hmm. No, it's it, it start. It I discovered that I was doing this at a certain moment that I was, when I was photographing, I would refer it to images that I already knew before I even collected them. And I think this is something that you anyway do, you know, when you design or when you think of things, you have certain, uh, even before you collect it, you already have certain ideas, no? But this you can make explicit, and I think this making explicit helps somehow. But do you sometimes feel the urge to, after making it explicit for yourself, to hide it again, because perhaps... Sometimes, yeah, but some I do. Some you I... tell us lies, <laughs> Maybe you tell these other actually have Yes, of course, there are many other ones. You need other ones, you know, you need ones that the other ones don't know. But that's, uh, I think that's normal. Uh, and maybe the other ones are not so, ex not so explicit in the sense that they are not visible, that the connections are not visible. And then it doesn't make sense to explain. No? Then it doesn't... I have to solve that problem first before I can uh, show it. Because I could have as easily given a lecture about Ronnie Horn, for instance, today. Mm -hmm. But that would be very difficult. To explain that would be much more difficult even. But th that's another, let's say, body of work that I think is extremely interesting. And that has a lot of references. As you mentioned, one of the three, four people ask you questions. Um, as the references, you have a miscellaneous uh, choices. So you have black and white and color ones. But you showed us uh, Baal's work that was clear, a decision to use the black and white, and the whole work of it, which gave me is color. Yes. So, what made you decide to, to, to choose color and not black and white in your work? Well, I mean, Giri would say the world is in color, you know. Why, why, why hide it, you know? And I somehow agree. And I think about he comes from, I mean, you, of course you can choose whatever you want, you know. You can, if it's instrumental, you use uh, black and white. But uh, I'm not yet to that point that I feel the urge to make, uh, let's say, to put a filter over the reality in that sense. I, I like to play with that, with that level of reality, you know, that, it's, that it still has the, has, the, has the color aspect. Because to me, black and white is another reduction, no? it's another redu which, which is valid to do, but it's, it is another reduction of the reality. Yeah, I was just wondering if sometimes you were showing your work without the reference. Of course, always. always. Except, in le except in lectures. Special. Yeah. But I mean, you, I understood that the, this specific exhibition in the gallery. It's were, only once. That was only once. Yes. And the books also. They, they don't have the references. They don't have reference. I, the, the book, the, the reservoir only has this reference. Um, because I felt the need, what I find interesting, maybe I should explain it in that sense, is that there are, let's say, you could, you could say 
that there are images which are returning, so which are returning in a, I would say, in an updated form. So if I, if I photograph this, which is a, uh, it's actually the, the building site of the Olympic Stadium in uh, Beijing, 2008. So it's in the middle of the city. Um, then this one was in my mind. That one was somehow, I understood it had to be the next step after this picture, or maybe Baltz was in between, doesn't matter, you know? The, uh, I think that images repeat, and exactly in that repetition, or that they return, there is the interesting part. So not that you have to remake them, you don't have to go to the same place and photograph it again. I think that the type of image is, that is returning helps you also to look at the image. Yeah, how do you choose your image brand? Because, I mean, for example, about the uh, three or four cities over Dubai, Beirut, and so on, how do you choose images about cities that you've never seen and that are going to, to frame your work and decide which picture you take in this particular city? Well, it's your first choice, no? It's your first choice of, of creating a certain uh, idea of what you want to do, no? You can't go completely blank, and you ch I choose them just randomly. I just choose. I go through the whole archive. Maybe there's three thousand, and I in one hour I pick maybe forty, and then I start to organize them. And this organization, that's actually it's not the picking of them. It's more the organization to understand which image could work with the next one, because it's. Um, Maybe, maybe I can show. So, the image is never a, a, a clear connection. So if I have, let's say, the one on the left, the one on the right, the one on the left, the one on the right, to me this makes this image, no? It's not one image that makes a new one, it can be many. And it somehow, it happens somewhere in between. Those four images together make me understand that this could be possible. Uh, work. No? It's not that I'm photographing exactly the the reference on the right. No, I just take pieces of it or imaginary. I, I I imagine pieces pieces of it, and it helps me to frame. It, it mainly helps me to see the image and to frame it. So to frame it in reality. So where should I point the camera? What should I exclude? What should I include? That that I think is the is the is the main uh, thing. And by doing this ordering before, so the the ordering of the references before, I somehow I'm confident afterwards that the images that I'm taking all around the world, because this is, I mean, this is like China, America, North North Africa. The, the reservoir, that they will work together. So these references, the connecting of the references also gives me confidence that all these places that are not geo geographically connected can be somehow put together. <laughs> Maybe it's too difficult, I don't know. Well, they keep on uh, I was wondering when, when I look at your pictures, I see a lot of isolated landscapes. But even when you make a picture within the city, you don't show there are not people. In the but there were, there were a lot of people here. No? Yeah, this is not true. How important were the pictures are coming to to show the city as maybe an empty landscape? Or no, I I decided something else. I decided. I decided that in the pictures, for, especially for the reservoir, that I only wanted to have people who are building or destroying the landscape. I didn't want to have passers-by or people drinking coffee. To me, this was not the essence of this uh, work. The essence of this work is this ambiguity of in which state the landscape is. And I think this ambiguity is the most interesting part, you know, that you cannot tell 
if it's destroyed or built, um, if it's natural or artificial. And I think uh, that in that landscape, only, only people who are working are part of it. And in most of these places, there actually are no people. They already left or they, they still have to come, one or the other. And that's fine, you know, that's no, it's not, uh, I'm not actively looking to have people. I'm also not actively looking to not have uh, people in them. If they're there, they are part of it. And, uh, and, 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 and if not, then that's the reality of it. Sometimes it's better to not have them because then you can play. Then, then let's say the idea of scale becomes more intriguing. Except here, I needed them to make the idea of scale more intriguing. More questions? Uh, well, uh, in your work, you talk about ambiguity. Um, do you feel like um, photography needs ambiguity in order to counterbalance the fact that uh, photography uh, is, um, uh, is a proof that uh, this all really exists? Or do you don't even care about that. Well, I think if, if, if I start with Giri Atlante, that already this question is becomes somehow obsolete, no? that this idea of reality is very, you know, this is what he's questioning, no? This is, it's always a representation and this representation can be interpreted in many ways. I don't feel like I'm photographing real places. I'm also not so interested in, in, the, in the hardcore reality of it. I'm interested in that, that you can think that it's a reality. But maybe your thought is a completely different one than the, than the reality that was there. But I think that is in the end where, where most photography is about, or where the most interesting photography is about, is that it's within the image that you can imagine something that, that you find true about it. If you go to any of these places in reality, you will pass by it. You will walk pass by it and you will have not seen it. Even when I'm walking with uh, friends and I'm taking a picture, Mostly the reaction is, oh, why this? And then when the picture is there, when it's not anymore part of the reality, when it's not anymore part of, of that part of the world, so let's say when all, everything which was left of the image and right of the images is cut off, then you start to see something, something else. And you, can, you might be able to see a certain idea maybe even. Does, um, of course, I would say both the giving as uh, doubts, uh, to show the giving, uh, there seems to be no distinction anymore between the object and landscape, completely collapse. In your pictures, that seems to be the case as well. Uh, is that, I mean, at least to what you showed them. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, so you uh, a conscious uh, kind of analysis of the world of today, meaning that uh, the, the supremacy of the object is such in an attempt to, to do something? Uh, well, I think the object is always in relation to something which, we, we, which maybe we forget. And, um, and I like to show that relation. And I would, I li when there's an object, I would like to make it as important as its, as its surrounding, so that, that that it's not clear if the object is in, is in a landscape or if the landscape contains objects. No, it's, it's a, um, I think these two, which in a way you could also say it's the ground and the object, which somehow, for, I find that the most interesting, how the object is somehow intrusing into the landscape or how the landscape is fighting back in a way. No? I would find it interesting because I think it is enough to do uh, the project to be done on a very territorial. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the way you, well, again, I use the word, you present ambiguity, like you say, the landscape fights back. Mm -hmm. 
that, that seems to be very different from, say, uh, the conjecture in which you could draw a line and mm -hmm. whatever happens. I mean, it's much more ambiguous. I mean, let's say the, the final position you present in the picture is not when somebody throws eh, in a modernistic fashion uh, a project, it's after yes. the negotiation has happened. Yes. I think it's very important for students to, to take that because it's quite different from, from some architects and how they look through that. I guess, yeah. But it's basically always the idea of something new intersecting with something existing in a way, no? And that that, um, that there, you know, there it becomes interesting <laughs> when you have a very clear form or a thing or you want to really do something, then you hit some boundaries and these boundaries make it Make it interesting, not only for the object, but all, but but also to look at it. You know what happens somehow. Uh, maybe one last question from my side. My side, you could say Giri, a little bit in what you showed. You showed a very limited set of pictures of Giri in a certain way, right? A very specific. Uh, yes. Scientific. Very also very consciously. Yeah, of course, I guess. So. But still, even in these limited sets, you could still see Giri as a quote out there to say to Baltz is that he's a romantic. He's very rom He's a little bit uh, old-fashioned, also. Are you in a, I am I oh, totally. I guess. I mean, otherwise, I think you and cannot where, do. Where, where, in what way? I mean, because I'm interested in it. Because of course, Balz being part of what has taken. Yeah, I think he's totally not. Yeah. Yeah, but also Giri, he would talk mainly about memory. For instance, a lot of his texts are about memory, and that uh, photography somehow can. He, almost, he, he would almost say it can retrace, it, it's, it's like a device to, to get back to a certain mood. I mean, I would never go that far, but, uh, uh, but in his case I can somehow understand and I also think that there is the beauty and that opposite to Bals, let's say, that it's also easier to look at uh, Giri, therefore. It's, it's more pleasing somehow. Huh? It's kind of... Oh. Huh? It's the color. Yes, it's the color, but also the very particular color. But it's a, because it's a very. I mean, I didn't, of course, tell. But Giri is like. A, I would, if I have to describe Giri, it's like uh, saying what is Richter to all German artists. Then that's Giri to all Italian photographers. No, I mean, he did everything. I only showed a very small part, but he basically everything what any Italian photographer is doing now, he at least did with five pictures already before. Which is somehow nice if you think back of what his, how he, how he explains that all images already exist, no? And that everyone now is claiming that they are doing new things. But he was doing it just because out of fun, I guess, you know? Let's do also this, let's do also that. If you go through his book, it's much more open than what I'm now uh, showing, but this in a way is the beginning. At the same time, in Kiri, I would have to say there's a certain sense of uh, surrealism. Uh, in his work. Yes. In fact, I mean, the ones, some of the ones you showed almost literally so, I mean, mm -hmm. collage technique. Um, how do you see you as a photographer and knowing that you take a picture and framing it is a specific way of taking something and not showing something else? Uh, to what extent is that a very specific technique of surrealism work for your work? I think it's, imp it's very important, but I think for Baltz it's the same. I think this is the essence of a... Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not for everyone, but uh, I think for many landscape photographers, this, and I would consider myself more a landscape photographer, and I consider Giri also a landscape photographer, is that... Uh, that that is part of what you what you do, you know, you work on. The main thing you work with is light and atmosphere in the end. It's a very banal thing and maybe you don't see it even when, when the pictures are finished, but, uh, but the main part that describes or gives your object or your relation to the landscape, uh, uh, that's how the light at that moment is. I can basically go to this place and maybe 50 times and not see anything and only at the right moment I will see it. But you could reverse it. I will only see something when everything is right 
and uh, in one hour I will pass by it without that I see anything and also I would never return to a place. I think I would never return, I would never pick a place and say, oh, this is a great place, maybe uh, maybe sun should be three o'clock, uh, maybe it doesn't work, to me it doesn't work like that, there is really, uh, I think it's a lot in the end, I never really thought about it, but it's really also a lot about this kind of atmosphere which is there at that moment and it has to happen at that moment. When I see it, when I see an image, let's say when it refers to a certain reference image, then I have to take the image. If I do it later, it always goes out of the out of the selection. But I don't know how that relates to the surreal to the surrealism question. <laughs> Any other question? Last question. Does it help for looking at architecture? Maybe that's my question to you. Uh -huh. Please Do you understand it's also about looking, that it's all about ideas and how to look at something and how to reinterpret and how you can imagine something new out of it? You can say no, I mean, it's fine, huh? <laughs> I totally agree. But, um, yeah. if, I, if I can say it, something or uh, the last uh, question uh, about your work uh, uh, using uh, a guide or anything, anybody to, to tell you what you do actually because I'm not I'm totally convincing about the work uh, but also about the place you go they are, all, they are beautiful all them. and uh, I think where you go it was like really a big 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 city and you know place, no, I think the places where I go are not particularly beautiful also. Yes, I think, uh, I think it was yeah. very interesting because uh, to my knowledge of course would be better answer yourself because I think it's probably exactly not this. I think yes. there's not any specific place where you go that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
some kind of a idea, but the idea is only in the image. It's not in the it's not in the reality. And how do you deal that with, for instance, architecture photography? It's difficult. <laughs> Idea that well, maybe Kirsten can answer that because I somehow sometimes photograph their buildings and what happens then, you know, they get a set of pictures and half of it they think, well, whew, this I didn't see and maybe why didn't he photograph this? And uh, well, maybe, maybe that's what we thought in the beginning because, you know, at certain point we accepted the fact that you take pictures and that's it. And it's true that very often... I think, of course, there's an oscillation going on, right? I mean, you talk to each other a lot. So I think that there's a part of the pictures which I think convey exactly... And you were talking about trying to kind of reconnect a certain idea to a building you find, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. an idea in the landscape. Yes. I think that's also very much how I feel you're taking pictures of our projects. Yeah, you know. but that's also the only way how I can uh, photograph so, architecture. And, and maybe, I hope, our work is in so specific that it also challenges you to, to find that idea. I mean, yeah, no, but to me, to, to me, the main reason for photographing architecture, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, uh, uh, is that when I photograph the building that is finished and I show the pictures to you or another person that, uh, that, uh, that, that built something, that you see a new idea in it that you hadn't seen before or a new twist, which you will basically use in the next building. No, it's, uh, to me, a photograph of a building is not a representation, it's just a kind of a continuing thinking of, of what you're doing, how you're designing. No? I think every view is always very particular and very precise, but you cannot have all the views. I mean, you as an architect, you can you don't have them all. Uh, well, I, I think that's something which we developed what it was you, which is the fact that a possible way of doing architecture is to uh, limit yourself in what you could show, so limit yourself also in what you want to do, and in that regard, uh, not wanting to have all the views. So yeah, but I think that the views that the views that are being chosen in the end are not the ones that are uh, made in advance. In advance, you know, are not the ones that are the perspectives or the or the plans or that you could have imagined before you started building. No, I think this to me is most important. That all the images that are taken from architecture show something, a way to continue, in a way. Yeah, but you start to create a very complex universe where reference pictures, pictures of your own work, other pictures, and even happens with you, I have the impression, because the references are references, but are also your own pictures as references, and remaking yes. the picture to yes. a yes. very important yes. aspect. Yes, but it's not very conscious in the end, in that sense. Uh, well... Yeah, or, or you go mad at a certain point, it's also possible, but... Well, before we start to do that conversation, let's uh, round off. Thank you very much, Bas.